The Security and Exchange Commission SEC released its long-awaited digital asset regulation that is meant to guide how digital assets such as cryptocurrencies are regulated in a country. Now, the new rules for digital assets are part of its effort to regulate the digital virtual assets such as bitcoins and NFTs. This document titled New Rules on Issuance, Offering Platforms and Custody of Digital Assets cover regulation on five major items ranging from issuance of digital assets to rules that govern digital asset exchanges in the country. Expectedly, the regulations have drawn several positive and negative remarks from cryptocurrency enthusiasts across the country and outside Nigeria. We will be looking at these regulations on the show today. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Now, just before we get into the discussion of the day, here is a highlight of the major stories that made headlines in Business Nigeria this week. Take a look. The federal government has said it is targeting local refining of over 2.555 billion barrels of crude oil worth over 120 trillion naira in the next five years. A combined refining capacity of more than 1.4 million barrels per day is expected from the rehabilitation of the existing four national refineries, co-location of new refineries, construction of greenfield refineries, and construction of modular refineries as part of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources refining roadmap in the next five years. The refining of 1.4 million barrels per day is approximately 2.555 billion barrels in five years. At least 51.3 million unique telecommunication devices may not have national identification numbers. According to the Nigeria Communications Commission's document titled Deployment of a Device Management System, Project Information Memorandum, Nigeria had about 132 million unique devices connected to telecommunication networks in 2020. It said, with more than 200 million active lines on the Nigerian telecommunication network, there is great potential for the development of a DMS in the Nigerian market. The Nigeria Identity Management Commission Enrollment Dashboard for April 2022 showed 80.7 million people had NRNs as of April 23, 2022. This leaves 51.3 million device owners without NRNs. Experts and entrepreneurs in the digital space have called for a critical review of Nigeria's digital economic regulations to meet up with other progressive economies. The professionals who spoke at the 2022 Legal Business Conference in Lagos said these digital sectors included blockchain, crypto, and fintech innovation. According to a statement, the professionals in the fintech and blockchain subsector of the financial industry said Nigeria was losing billions of naira owing to its inability to explore and maximize my rates of opportunities inherent in the digital world like other economies. African Economic Outlook 2022, released by the African Development Bank, has projected the average growth of Nigeria's economy this year through to 2023 at 3.2%. The report, which was released at the ongoing annual general meeting of the bank in Accra, Ghana, focuses on the growth prospects of the continent in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change adaptation, energy transition, and other structural challenges. The report unveiled by the president of the bank, Dr. Akiwumi Adishino, his team and board of governors examines the economic outlook at regional level and country-by-country country basis. AFDB's projection is slightly higher than the 3.11% growth rate of quarter one as released by the National Bureau of Statistics. Welcome back. Those are the stories that made headlines. Reactions are already trailing the new regulations by SEC, 
Some experts have said, although the guidelines were a welcome development for the country, the ingredient of the regulation did not favor the local market. Well, joining us now to share his perspective on the development is certified blockchain architect, Rume Dominic. Rume, thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. All right, let's dive into it, uh, Rume. Let's just start by asking your reactions concerning these new sets of regulation. How does it really hit you? Okay. <laughs> Interestingly, it's one that is actually welcome idea. It is a very good thing, actually. It is, that it is good that we have clarity forward, especially with digital assets in Nigeria. You see, when you ask, investors want clarity when they want to get into any market, when they want to invest a lot of money, a lot of billions into every market, and they want to see profit, they want to be able to weigh their risks to reward ratio in order to ensure that they are extremely profitable on the long run. So while we see some of these particular um, complaints around the recent SEC regulation that was released, I find it as very interesting and it's one that will actually pave a good way for the development of cryptocurrency assets. Because, I mean, we have um, seen good players come in from outside this particular country that would also have a lot of money to be able to invest. But one place that I find it very, very um, very, very troubling is that the SEC, in most of their provisions, especially for this particular regulation, they are actually on the side of taking from most of the um, cryptocurrency pioneers and they are not really giving back to them. All right, we'll no, discuss all, all, much all right, more about right. that. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. Uh, they they taken from uh, the players and not really investing. We'll take it one step at a time. But let's talk about uh, you know some other issues uh, people have commented on specifically the. Uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission is actually classifying uh, this particular uh, uh, asset as, um, you know, securities, as it were. And uh, it's um, a pair-to-pair -pair network, if you ask me, uh, the Bitcoin and all that, and it's very hard to regulate. Don't you think that in itself is an issue? Well, the, that is actually not meant to be our first major focus. Our first major focus should be this particular technology that just hits the ground, when we look at it in terms of finance, okay, it is just an enabler of finance in the sense that it is currency that is used in the digital world to actually enable finance. So we should first be focused on not the pay to pay nature or how safe it can be because of this particular regulation that came on. But let's take, for example, they, um, one of the major, one, some of the major requirements stated that we needed about a uh, hundred thousand naira first of all for like an application fee. Then you need about two hundred thousand naira to be able to get the processing going on. Then you also need about thirty million naira to also get some registration, and then you also need about five hundred million naira for what for capital, which you would need to put on ground before you are able to even exchange digital asset just like you said now especially with bitcoin bitcoin pair to pair so after you've brought forward all these requirements you still need to now go after fulfill this particular legal requirements before you now before you'll be able to exchange bitcoin if you put it in the pair to pair manner everybody that has fulfilled this but yeah can you hear me yeah we can hear you we lost you at some point uh, please go ahead with your thoughts Okay, so I was saying that we should look critically at the security aspect of it in the sense that we looked at it and then we needed about, from the requirements that we're given, we needed about 100,000 naira for you to first of all register, you needed about 300,000 naira for you to even put for that particular application, then you needed about 30 million, which is about um, f almost $50,000 to be able to quickly get that particular registration process going on and then you need a capital requirement of about 500 million, million naira. naira and then you also need an upfront capital of about eight thousand six hundred dollars when you put all of this together it ensures that 
If somebody goes into this particular space and does not fulfill what he or she is promising to the Nigerian investors, to the Nigerian populace, all of these particular assets that we have made mention of in the past would be at risk. So it makes people to be able to live up to a certain level of integrity, especially with the deliverables that the Nigerian populace will be expecting, the trustworthiness that the Nigerian populace will be expecting from the investment that they are making into this particular digital space. So we should not focus on the anonymous nature of it first. We should focus on the security that it is providing to the Nigerian populace through this particular revolution. That is what I think. All right, um, uh, Rumi, fine. You've talked about um, the cumbersomeness of um, the financial um, outlay and requirement for digital assets and um, offering platforms, that's the DAOPs. But some people have also said that um, uh, it's as though the, security, the Securities and Exchange Commission and the CBN are actually working at cross purposes over this regulation. Do you agree? Well, I would not say it is, that conclusion is far-fetched. Um, regardless, let's also note that this is not a, a letter or a circular from the CBN that, that negates their February um, 2021 circular to the banks that ban cryptocurrency. This is actually a circular from the SEC saying that, well, you want to do cryptocurrency in Nigeria, you want to be able to get into this space, you want to do big business here, you guys can, if you can this particular requirement, then you are free to be able to come into our legal system and you are legally recognized. Meanwhile, I think what will happen is after this particular phase has passed, then the CBN would now come out and start lifting some of those bans that they've placed on cryptocurrencies before now. But that is not really to say that because of this particular circular for the regulation that is out, CBN has actually withdrawn that particular statement or that particular circular that was given out to the banks. It is just a way to be able to now say, okay, um, people that are interested, since Nigeria is one of the biggest markets, we are welcoming that particular um, engagement. Like, you know, you know that Nigeria was part of the people that went for this last uh, Salvador's um, Bitcoin conference. And considering the fact that Nigeria also has the CBDC, which is the e e era attached to their portfolio, it is good that Nigeria is actually taking a very strong standpoint to regulate this. And I think the CBN should start taking a little bit of uh, um, lesson from this now. So, but what I want them to do is to do something that is also stretching to the community. Before they take many of these particular, um, these particular conclusions, they should try to reach a lot of the communities so that they would be able to play this particular regulation in a way that it will be that it will not stifle innovation. It will be beneficial to both the small players and the big players. I was going to I was, I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that, uh, uh, Rume, because a lot of people actually said before this or uh, after this uh, new set of rules uh, were brought out by the Securities and Exchange Commission, it was a general thing that um, you know the active players or the key players were not carried along. There was no town hall meeting or stakeholders meeting to bring about all of the input. It was as though they just brought them the hammer on them players. Do you agree? Yes, I actually do agree. Because when you take a statistical outlook at the industry right now, you see that the majority of the players, especially in the Nigerian market, they are young people. Young people within the age of about 20 to 30 years old. And let's be factual, one of the major problems of entrepreneurs in Nigeria is access to capital. And that's one of the problems that blockchain actually solves because it helps them to be able to raise funds through processes like crowdfunding. But then access to capital, when you might not have lasted in the space for so long a time, maybe like four or five years, you might not have access to that, those much capital that we just called. So you see that the average 25 years old boy, which is already a big player, and a medium player in this particular space might not really be able to fulfill all of those requirements. Now, it is like this. You then shut that particular man's business down because of this particular SEC regulation. And then you have foreign investors that have seen the opportunity. They come into the country and they have the money because they are actually coming with enough dollars and then they're able to pay the Security Exchange Commission and they're able to monopolize this particular market. Meanwhile, there's also no provision in all of this um, 
um, regulation saying that, okay, since some of these local players or these young um, individuals might not be able to meet up, these young individuals, is there a, when these big companies come with their money now, would they give, would they partner with some of these local companies? Would they be able to say, okay, let them invest 20% of the funds back into the development of this local company so that with time, after like two years, these particular local players that do not have money now, they will start investing into the big leagues and start playing in the big leagues. Or I think they should have also done it like this. They should have also looked at a way of saying, okay, for some of the high, maybe if you do so and so value of um, transaction, because they focus so much on the exchanges. If you do so and so volume of transaction, then you can pay so and so amount, maybe about 15 million or maybe about 10 million. Then if you are playing in so and so capacity, or they make it like a tier, they give it a tier type of um, structure so that a lot of people can be accommodating for a lot of young players so that mm -hmm. you will not see the innovation die and a lot of youth just go hungry at All a right. time where a lot of recession to come out from. Okay, so speaking of which, all of these challenges that you've talked and uh, big companies trying to take over when uh, ordinarily it is uh, the young people who are really involved in uh, this digital uh, economy in Nigeria. So don't you think it's high time uh, this players, be they uh, active or just um, passive ones, don't you think it's high time that um, you guys came together and maybe forged some sort of a common front or maybe like an identity so that um, your voices can be heard Amply. Yes, I strongly agree with you that it's high time to come together and form a very strong um, group and movement that will make our voice heard very well. And coming to that particular aspect, that's why we have one of the um, strongest body in Nigeria, CBAN, stakeholders of the Blockchain Association of Nigeria, which I am an executive of. And if you notice, um, about two weeks ago, we posted, we published a a, a circular on one of the national dailies, especially relating to this digital asset and some of the challenges around it. So we have started gathering up ourselves, gathering up our mind to see that we get one single voice as an organization as CBAN. So we do that with the platform of CBAN, which is the stakeholders of the Blockchain Association of Nigeria, so that we can forward petitions and we are also able to work, regulate it. The major problem I see here is actually the inner the unwillingness of the government bodies to work with people that are far much more experienced than them. You see, in other developed countries, they set up panels, they set up boardrooms for experts that know about all of these things. They even pay for them to come and teach them these things and then guide them through. We are doing this, some, we are, a lot of us are trying to do these things in Nigeria, especially at the, in the governmental level, with trial and error, or they are just trying to copy things that are not realistic or that is not even related, uh, is not practically applicable to their geographical region. So I think that is where the major problem is coming from. They should try to see how they can work with much more uh, experts and then see how they can also tailor their regulations, especially relating to their geographical location, their markets, and how Nigeria can actually really scale with this particular innovation. Well, Ruben, uh, it's good you've talked about uh, some of these challenges, and uh, I just want us to look uh, at some preferable uh, or, uh, solutions to all of this. You talked about uh, uh, the, uh, the exchange focusing on it as more of a security than all the other issues. You also talked about uh, identifying uh, the original players and working with them in as much as they might not really understand them, how it um, relates to this particular geographical location. So what else can the uh, maybe regulators and of course uh, players do in the immediacy, in the short term, to ensure that all of these bottlenecks are, you know, stemmed? Okay. You know, they say you can never beat the place of experience in a man's life. One of the ways a lot of us started getting very interested in this, that we started experiencing the currency, we started experiencing the technology itself, and we started developing use case and business solutions that are currently still viable and have a lot of solutions that are still offering to the public. So the first place the people should come from is to start from a knowledge point, which is the place of acquiring skills. So that's why at Vorem, we have an academy, Vorem Academy, where we teach all of the blockchain skills. That we have about 20 blockchain courses where we dispense all of those things in about 107 different modules, which focuses on the security, 
the regulatory parts of cryptocurrency, the distributed ledger, the business use case, how it applies to different technologies, different geographical locations, the new metaverse, the NFTs, how to be able to use them to assess decentralized autonomous organizations, how to be able to use them for um, governance and voting. So this is actually one of the pathway that is required for a better regulatory and implementation process. When we have that and we are coming from a knowledge point and we are able to tackle this with enough experience, then that particular challenge will no longer be an issue. All right, we must say a very big thank you to you, Rume Dominic, for all of these um, insights that you have shared. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again in future as this development unfold in our digital economy. Thank you so much, Rume. All right, no problem. Thank you. Yes, it is indeed our pleasure. Rume Dominic is a certified blockchain architect. Well, staying with the financial sector, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, says it will continue playing its role as a bridge to engender positive collaborations between all players in fintech for the good of the industry. Ken Okbara said this during his investiture at the 22nd President and Chairman in Council of the CIBN, which held in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that, and I'll see you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Gathered at this hall are banking professionals who have converged to celebrate the men who will control the hems of affairs of the Bankers Institute for the next two years. Though they are in a celebratory mood, Musings about the industry which has witnessed relative stability in recent times and made economic headwinds resound. I shall abide by. I shall abide by. After his investiture, the new CIBN bus, Ken Okbara says, the future of banking, which revolves around the Generation Z, is a focal strategic goal for his administration, hence the need to encourage fintech. His predecessor, Bayo Olubemi, shares similar thoughts. The future is here. It means that we need to begin to build up inclusion, have the Gen Z, the younger people, who definitely will take over from us to be inspired to do the business of banking. We have seen that a lot of channels uh, of, uh, of uh, delivering our services and uh, technology is the main, the main thing now. If you don't embrace technology in banking, you'll fail. So that's why I encourage banks. We do a lot of uh, financial technologies, but we should do much more than what we are doing now. The competition for traditional banks has shifted in the past seven years from fellow banks and peers to small but mighty adventure-seeking entities called fintechs. As the conversation shifts towards payment system and the CBN's e-Naira, the bank executives share their thoughts on the future and viability. Meanwhile, in an address, the Lagos State government promises to continue to make the state conducive for business to thrive. In terms of um, payment system, you discover that the banks have done so much in accelerating the payment system. It's one of the countries in this you know, in this world, where you can do online service and get instant payment. It does even in US. If you do payment, it doesn't happen instantly. And that's essentially is a credit to the banking system. I think our people, uh, Nigeria in particular, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we prefer cash, cash and cash. But little by little, I think the tenants or the policy of Inara, we, we go that. Show you all that we are working tirelessly to further strengthen the economy and the financial sector in Lagos to make life better for all my worship. In line with re-engineering the sector, the CIBN promises to develop a digital roadmap for the banking and finance industry and offer certifications on digital skills. 